Hi, my name is Emil O'Reilly, and I work on the Azure Functions team at Microsoft. And today I'm going to show you a new capability we brought into Azure Functions, and that's the ability to author PowerShell. And this gives you the ability to now perform event-based automation across your applications and your infrastructures. So as you start to deploy your applications and you think about all the different systems you have to integrate in order to be able to manage that, you now have the ability to author PowerShell in Azure Functions and integrate seamlessly across all these different systems. So with that, let me go into a demo and I'll walk you through a scenario that you can perform today to actually help you automate your entire application. So in this demo, I'm basically going to um, add a tag. So I have a subscription, and this is a developer subscription. So every time I get virtual machines created in there, I want to add a tag to these so that at night, when they're not being used, I want to automatically shut those down. And so this saves a lot of cost, and so it's something we'd want to be able to enforce across all our developer and test subscriptions. So with that, I'm going to switch over and show you that inside of the Azure Functions. So here you can see we're in the Azure portal. I'm going to walk you through how PowerShell now shows up as a new language that's available inside of the experience. So you can see here that we have now Azure Functions for PowerShell. And of course, we have all the great capabilities uh, functions have to author in VS Code or in different editors or tools you're using, as well as inside the portal. And we get all the rich templates that are available so that you can trigger this automation based on a whole set of um, capabilities that Functions offers. So in this scenario, I already had three different functions created. So one was, every time a new virtual machine gets created or updated, I want to add a tag. I have another one that says, OK, based on that tag information, I want to start the machine on a certain hour, or I want to stop it. So the nice thing about Azure Functions is you can do all of your editing within the portal. And so here you can see I have PowerShell now based on PowerShell 6 core. So this is using the latest uh, PowerShell 6, which is built on .NET Core. So it can actually be developed on your Windows machine, your Linux machine, or your Mac. But inside the portal, it doesn't matter. So I can just author all the PowerShell that I normally would do. And you can see here, I've actually done some integration with Event Grid. And so one thing that's nice about Azure Functions is it has this native integration into services in Azure. So one of them I'm integrating with is Event Grid. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I go into my uh, Event Grid subscription, you can see that I've actually, every time a new uh, machine gets uh, created or updated, I'm going to trigger my function to actually go process that event. And if I look at the filters, you can basically say, um, see that every time that I have a virtual machine that was um, created or updated, and there was a successful creation of that, I want to get notified in my Azure function. And so this with Event Grid, I can just set this up seamlessly in one or two clicks, and now I can call my Azure function. So I go into my virtual machines, and I click on my tags. You can see I have a tag here um, that I've added because I created this machine. But if I deleted this and I saved it, this would then go and Event Grid would pick up this change, notify me, I have my function automatically run. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the benefits we've added to bringing PowerShell into Azure Functions and how you can start to do that yourself in your own organization. And so the nice thing is that you can do all of these changes inside of the Azure portal and integrate seamlessly into other services but you also have a rich development environment in VS Code where you could author all of your PowerShell as well. So let me switch over to that and show you how you can do it. Okay, so now if I go into VS Code, there's a few things I want to show you that we've done specifically to help PowerShell work inside of, the, of uh, VS Code. And so the first thing I want to show is this profile.ps1 file. And so one of the advantages of using Azure Functions is we have built-in managed identities. And so that allows the function app to actually authenticate itself and perform actions across your entire subscription. So because I've enabled managed identity on my function app, I can now automatically authenticate my function every time it runs using this profile.ps1. So as the application starts up, I'm going to authenticate myself. And then every single time a function um, runs, I don't have to re-authenticate. It will be done once across the life cycle of all the different functions that execute inside of the app. But you could also add other capabilities into this profile.ps1 that you want to have start up every time the application starts before you actually execute functions. Another critical thing we've added 
is the ability to manage all of your dependencies. So oftentimes when you're writing these functions in PowerShell, you're going to want to integrate into other Azure services, stop VMs, add tags, you know, add certificates. How you do that is typically with the Azure modules. And so how the Azure modules are enabled inside of the service is, one, you could install them and upload them as part of your function app. And so you can save those and put them in the modules folder and upload them. But we've also added a new feature that we've called Manage Dependency. You can see it's a property here, and we've enabled it to true. And so if you add this property now on your PowerShell-based functions, the service will actually identify this, and it will look for requirements.psd1 file. And so this now requirements.psd1 file is actually going to um, get processed every time your function app starts up. And because I've set it to 1.star, this allows me to keep up to date with the latest changes that have happened inside of the AZ module. So if there were security fixes or critical fixes that you wanted to get, you can set this and the service will take care of automatically updating those for you. And so that's a key benefit of not just having the modules available, but also keeping them up to date so you don't have to worry about it. And you focus mostly on just writing the business logic. So again, if I go back in here, one of the great things about um, authoring in functions is not to, you can do in the portal, but you have the rich debugging um, and authoring experience inside of VS Code. So inside of here, if I wanted to debug this um, timer-based one, I could just add in wait debugger. And now what's going to happen is I'll be able to stop this function as it runs and then be able to attach a debugger. So let me open up a prompt here. So here I'm going to start the function app. So here you can see I'm starting it locally and getting all of the verbose logging so I can troubleshoot if anything's happening. And now I'm going to call that function. So this should be started. And I should be able to actually attach to the debugger. So I'm going to attach here. And you can see I'm now inside the debugger, inside a PowerShell. And I can step through the debugger just like I would if I was debugging any other function, except now I can do it all locally inside of VS Code. And this gives me the ability not only to um, identify issues, but I can change variables inside of this experience as well. So as I walk through here, you can see I'm just stepping through, found a virtual machine. You can see I now have a cost tag. So if I print out that cost tag, you can see it's um, auto shutdown at, is set to true, start time 7 p.m., end time 7 a.m. But I could change one of those values because I'm using PowerShell inside of VS Code, but because the functions experience is integrated, I can actually go and change those and fully debug my experience locally here before I publish it into the function service and have it run there. So this really gives you the ability to not only integrate all your systems up in Azure, but you can do it locally as well inside of VS Code and take advantage of all of what PowerShell offers. Um, and just to show how it completed, if I go into my experience, you can see what I've done is not only have I added a tag, I've actually sent a notification into my team saying that this uh, machine I just modified um, has been updated with that tag information. And if I click here, what it does is it brings me back into my portal experience so I can see that virtual machine. And I should have actually added that tag that I deleted back in. So now it will get shut down um, at 7 uh, p.m., start up again at 7 a.m automatically for me. So I'll click into tags. And you can see I added that cost tag back with this auto shutdown information. And so now my timers that I've just been testing will kick in in the service and automatically start and shut down based on what the developer wanted for the virtual machine. So let me um, end by going back into my PowerPoint and show you some other scenarios that you can perform as you start to operate not just your application and your infrastructure using Azure Functions with PowerShell. So here's some um, common event-based automation scenarios. I showed you one about you know, giving you the ability to apply some rules on top of your subscription so you can recover some costs when your resources are not being used. But again, you could integrate across all different types of scenarios that you're doing today, but start to automate those inside of Azure Functions using PowerShell. And here's a few examples that we see a lot of our customers doing that you could try out in your own organization. So with that, I'm going to stop. Thank you for uh, watching. 
And I hope you get a chance to try out PowerShell. It's in uh, public preview right now inside of Azure Functions.